Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We're now being joined by environmental activist Desmond Makajekodomi uh, to discuss a very important issue on the preservation of an endangered animal in the world, and that's the pangolin. Good morning, Mr. Makajekodomi. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. All right, so the statistics are clear. Pangolin is the world's most endangered species, the world's most trafficked mammal. And we see just how much interest the Asian nations have in this mammal and how it's made this mammal very, you know, endemic in the country, very and become an endangered species in the country. So I want you to shed, you know, more light on why pangolins are endangered in the world and how you think hunters and traders might be contributing to this risk? Well, this wonderful creature, which is yet another of the incredible manifestations of the miracle of creation. And please let that phrase resonate in your consciousness. The creatures and the various aspects of creation can only be described as miraculous. The way that they interact with each other, the specific roles they play. I mean, just the metabolism of some creatures, when you think about it, it is astounding. It's only now that science is really understanding it. And the pangolin has a very, very important role to play in this wonderful miracle of creation. The tongue of the pangolin is as long as its body. And the only creature it feeds on is the ants and the termites, who also have an important role to play in nature because they help to break down biodiversity they help to bring, like if wood there is there, the, the, the termite will, will break the wood down into a substance that can now be absorbed as manure by other plants and so on. But if there's too many termites, then the balance would be over tipped. It would be out of proportion. So guess what? The pangolin is there with this very long, long tongue and it consumes millions and millions of those ants during its lifetime. All right, so the pangolins... Okay, but it also, it also plays a very, very important role with its claws because it goes into the soil and it aerates the soil. So it's like a tiny uh, tractor, wonderful oh. creatures. All right, Mr. Majakodumi, now, now we have a better sense of, you know, an understanding of just how important the pangolin is for biodiversity and, you know, balance in the ecosystem. But we know that, you know, hunters are not doing much good to the existence of pangolins in the world and Nigeria. I want you to talk about that and what other factors might be responsible for why pangolins are now so trafficked and endangered in the world? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, people have always hunted what they call bushmeat. It's bushmeat, it tastes good, you eat it, you know, and hunters have always hunted creatures like the pangolin. But over the recent decades, the demand for the pangolin has increased tremendously, particularly because in China, there's this myth that the, the scale of the pangolin is highly medicinal and it's a complete myth because the scale of the pangolin is carotene which is the same as your fingernail it's made from carotene so rather than you know taking pangolin scales you could just be chewing your your fingernails but you know the myth has perpetrated so there's a huge demand for the pangolin scales and also the meat is a little bit of a delicacy oh. and the unfortunate reality is that our hunters, like our people, like people all over the world, are taking a long time to come into the realization that we human beings have pushed far too far, far too hard, this wonderful miracle of creation. And that's why, that's why just last week, the Secretary General of the United Nations, do you know what he said? <laughs> 
Wait for it. Mankind, mankind is committing war against nature. And this is suicidal because nature will always fight back. And this is exactly what we are seeing her doing. This is Howard Guterres, Secretary General of the United right. Nations, Mr. when he was addressing a world conference. Yeah, so Mr. unfortunately, Michael you know, our hunters are just carrying on the good old tradition, carrying on good old things. And what they're not appreciating, like so many millions and millions and millions of us all over the world, is that the paradigm has shifted. The paradigm has shifted. 2020, 2020 opened the window of the action of retribution from nature. All right. Um, you know, hold, on. hold on, Mr. Maja um, And of course, I couldn't agree uh, more with the United Nations uh, uh, Secretary General. Um, you know, over time, you know, I think I've also mentioned it, you know, that mankind has become, you know, more of a disaster to Mother Earth than, you know, any other thing, um, humans rather. Um, but I, I want us to, you know, go further into talking about, you know, the pangolins now. I, for one, didn't know much about, you know, how endangered it was here in Nigeria. Um, I've always focused, you know, attention on, you know, all the animals that have been hunted, you know, for trophy hunting in other, you know, parts of Africa. But we're, we're doing a lot of damage to pangolins. There is something called the Nigeria Endangered Species um, Act. Um, that basically outlaws trading pangolins. Um, it also has jail time for people who are found guilty. How effective has this law been? And has it in any way slowed down the killing of pangolins in Nigeria? Excellent observation. Good question. Unfortunately, the law, like so many of our other laws, have not been nearly as effective as they should have been and as they need to be. And as a result of this, the capturing and the killing, the slaughtering of these pangolins has been going on unabated. And this creature is on the brink of being driven into extinction. And unfortunately, again, we as people are not appreciating that there are fundamental laws fundamental laws, which are the foundation of the various state laws, the legislative uh, laws that come out of our governmental system. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the law of action and reaction. This is a, a fundamental law. It's inescapable. It's as, uh, as inviolable as as the law of, of gravitation. You can't escape it. Right. Um, it, it is expressed in, in, in Newton's third law of dynamics. For every action, there's a reaction. You know, if I carry a, a piece of paper uh, and I drop it, it, it'll fall as if I release my hands. Why is that? Because there's an inviolable law of gravitational pull. No, so, no, we, so where we, do you... we, we, we don't have to accept that law. But that doesn't mean that it is not there and it is existing. And yeah. unfortunately for us, the law of action and reaction, it's there. It's in all of our scriptures. It's in the Holy Bible. It's in the Holy Quran. It's in yeah, the Bhagavad Gita. Unfortunately, it's in the Shustras. It's there. Unfortunately, Whatsoever before, a man starts, so surely shall he reap. Yes. Unfortunately, before those laws and before karma, um, before Mother Earth you know, completely fights back, um, you know, it might be too late for the pangolin. So we need to take action here as uh, Nigerians and, of course, as Nigerian government. So where do you think the biggest work needs to start to save pangolins from extinction here in Nigeria? Um, is it with, you know, educating these farmers and these people who have continued to hunt and kill these animals? Um, or is it, you know, mostly with, you know, the Asian governments and those people who are buying these products and, and these uh, shells? skills rather well actually the biggest work is starting right now on this program when an illustrious station like this can broadcast this cause it is a very very positive indication because it's all down to the awareness 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 
and then we'll now activate the processes. There are already groups of people, like a wonderful group called the Wild Aid, Lufasi Nigerian Conservation Foundation as well. They're reaching out to the farmers. They're reaching out to the hunters. They're reaching out to the market people and telling them, look, this particular creature leave it leave it it's far too important mm -hmm. and also through the ministry of agriculture we're trying to promote a different type of bushmeat type of activity which is more or less like the farming of certain types of creatures within the bushmeat and then of course the international groups as well likewise sensitization 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 and also the religious groups, that is the, the faith leaders, the leaders of the churches, the leaders of the mosques in Nigeria, because we're a very God-believing country, they have a very crucial, important role to play. Because again, again, it's very clear there's no ambiguity in the scriptures in terms of humans' relationship to the creation. Um, my Muslim brothers have told me very clearly that uh, they are called caliphs, which are caretakers, stewards of the creation. In the Holy Bible, there's very, very clear injunctions. Not only, not only does the Creator say that His creation is very good, which it is, when you look at the incredible miracle of it, the harmony of it, and so on, but He also admonishes. In fact, He instructs that uh, humanity is to care for the creation. In Genesis 2.15, he put the man there to look after it. And then Jesus says we're supposed to love our creator above all else. So there's a very serious issue here. Because if we're professing to love the creator, if we are professing to worship the creator, and he says we should care for his creation, and we're destroying his creation, like wiping out the pangolin. Remember, extinction is forever. We cannot create the pangolin. God right. Almighty created it Ms. through his Mr. wonderful, Magical miraculous Jimmy. processes of evolutionary development and so on. We can't create that pangolin, and yet, and yet, we're wiping it out because of just pecuniary activity. We want to make more money, more money, more All money. Right. And Mr. the Mr. reason why we're Mr. doing Magical it is Jimmy. a totally uh, bogus thing Apo anyway. Apologies you know? for the then interruption. Then we very, very careful. Mr. Very, very, very careful indeed. Mr. Because Magical we're professing Jimmy. to love God and we're wrecking his creation. Ms. Mr. Mr. I, I appreciate your enthusiasm and the fact that you've brought in a religious angle to this, saying that, you know, God has put us to care for animals. But talking about, you know, one of the ways we can care for them is enforcing action against the illegal trade of pangolins. Uh, reports have it that Nigeria is one of the major transit hub of illicit and pangolin trafficking in Nigeria, you know, to Asia. And... Just in 2018, the customs seized about 14,000 metric tons of pangolin scales at the port. But do you think uh, border and you know, customs agencies are doing enough to intercept pangolin trafficking in Nigeria? And what more can they do? Mm, excellent observation. I'm so glad you asked that particular question. Well, that recent uh, uh, capture uh, was of, of those scales was very, very positive indeed. I'm very, very encouraged that they did that because you can be sure that whoever was responsible for that, he would have been offered some, you know, <clears throat> very tempting <laughs> type of uh, amounts to just forego it and so on, which unfortunately has been going on far too much in the past. And again, we need to appeal to our customs agents. We need to appeal to people who are in a position to curtail this problem. That you also, you also are subject to the laws of retribution. The scripture says, whatsoever a man soweth, so surely shall he reap. So if you allowed a large amount of pangolin scales to go because you were bribed to let them go, that comes back on you in one way or the other. It's an inviolable law. That's why the scripture is very clear about it. And again, it's not just the Holy Bible. It's not just the Holy Quran. It's all man's scripture and it's also science. So we're appealing to our customs people, please, please, please recognize the fact that we are all subject to the laws of nature. We are subject to the laws of God who created nature in the first place. And we should be proud of our jobs. We should be proud of upholding the law. Yeah. And we shouldn't Mr. compromise. Mr. And you know the sad thing? 
is that those scales that they that they captured, that they seized, it represents you know thousands of pangolins, but it's probably only about ten percent of the ones that were actually seized. Can, can, can we can we can we can, can we quickly speak on um, how urgent? Um, we need to, you know, you know, start making moves to save the pangolins. Do you have any figures, you know, that can show, you know, what the average number that is left on the earth or here in Nigeria is? Uh, do you have any figures, you know, on to, you know, that tells how many more years of pangolin hunting would completely wipe them off um, uh, the earth? Good, good question. The the sad reality about the pangolin, you see, again. It expresses the harmony of nature because pangolin is such a voracious anteater. They don't reproduce that regularly. They, they only usually have like one offspring a year, unlike most other mammals who will have several, multiple offsprings. So there's not that many pangolins in the forest. Most of the ones in Asia have been almost totally wiped out. That's why they're targeting the African pangolin now. And ours will not last that long, maybe another five, maybe 10 years if it continues this way. But it's also a symbol, you know, and we should learn, we should learn from this lesson. Because if we allow the pangolin to go into extinction, despite knowing its importance, despite knowing that we are driving it into extinction, we stand the very serious risk of driving our own species into extinction as well. Because it's not just right. the pangolin that we're wiping out. You know the planet Earth now is experiencing the fastest species extinction that has been known when since mankind has, has been on this Earth. Oh, mm. oh, yes. And these are the, you know, these, these creatures that are going into extinction, they are, they are the webs of life. And you know, in a web, if you break one strand, the web will still be there, you break another strand, but eventually you'll break the last strand. And mm. God forbid that we shall do that to All right. our children. And I believe that we won't. Mr. Maja Kodomi, before, before we let you go, I want to quickly ask you about what's the way forward regarding animal protection. We see lots of these organizations out of the country, but here in Nigeria, we have very few animal shelters, animal protection, animal rehabilitation groups. Why do we have so few of them in the country and how can we improve, you know, uh, talking about enlightenment for people to, you know, look into this to conserve and protect endangered species like the pangolins in Nigeria? Mm, yeah, unfortunately, again, for us, it's a fairly new thing. We're so blessed here in, in Nigeria, here in West Africa, abundance of everything. And we're so used to having so many of these creatures. So it's actually an awareness. It's an awareness, awareness, awareness. In fact, a, a renewal of our minds, a renewal of our minds. COVID should have taught us that nature is an extremely powerful force. She snaps her fingers and the whole world shuts down. And if we continue doing what we're doing against the wildlife, we shall unleash yet another zoonotic pandemic. And I don't think anybody wants to do that. So just love nature. Okay, and know that by loving nature, you're loving the creator of nature and you're being right. a true yeah. worshiper, a true praiser of God Almighty. Well All right. put, um, Mr. Maja Kodumi. Thank you so much um, for this conversation and we hope that, you know, that the word gets out, you know, and uh, we can save as many of these pangolins as possible. And also there's more information about um, animals and wildlife here in Nigeria. Um, that people can feed off. Thank you very much, Desmond Maj Majakundumi, for speaking with us. Ooh. All right, short break when we come back. Wally Scott will be joining us, and we're talking sports next uh, here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Don't go anywhere.